Hello ladies and gentlemen, the following is a podcast that we did on November the 28th, 2010. Um, it's, uh, John Reed is not with us today, it's the three of us, John, Donnie, and Bob, and we are discussing land trusts, and land trusts are part of, um, a package to help us protect our assets within our company and individually. It's just one of the tools, um, that we use, uh, to potentially protect our assets. We'll be discussing that today. Um, today's podcast is over an hour long. Um, we each have different viewpoints and different ideas on how to protect our assets, um, you know, individually and within our company. So it'll be interesting for you to um, uh, hear our different um, ideas and viewpoints. Um, as usual, you can find us on LandLoansJournal.com and view our schedule um, and find our podcast if you want to hear the audio only on that, on our website and on iTunes. Thank you. Can I go look at my bank? We kind of forego, for, we kind of had no. foregone the uh, usual intro to, to our show that Donnie usually does. And I pulled this off of Ustream. So again, this have. is LandlordJournal.com podcast, and we are discussing... Um, what Excuse me, we are what, discussing what land trust and asset, their value for um, for asset protection and many other uses. You can find that out. If you, if you um, don't hold your property in a land trust, if you hold it in your own name, rather yeah, they than don't may not know. They'll have a pretty good idea of what the value of your property is and how many pieces of property you own. <coughs> if you just have it in your own name. So that's one of the values of having a land trust right there. What is a land trust? No one's going to answer. Go ahead. You've got it pulled up. So yeah, I have it pulled up. Since you have that, I thought it would be most appropriate for you to do that. A land trust is a way to manage complex divisions of the bundle of rights that people can own in real estate and can be used to manage something as large as a, large and complex as a multi-state, multi-state REIT or something as small as a single family home. Corporations sometimes set up land trusts when they want to compile large tracts of land without arousing suspicion or alerting people to their plans, <clears throat> which um, I guess basically it's a document. I, mean, I don't know. It's a trust. That's recorded in the, at the courthouse. And the so, dirt, well, it's a legal entity that would own, it would possess something, right? It is. It's, it's, a, it, it's a. It's a division between the ownership and the rights of property, right? Uh, it's. It's a way to. If, if if I if I own a place and my name is on it, I am the. I, 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 um, I'm the owner, plus I carry all the liability and, and such for that property. But if I have it in a trust, I can control the property without having, I can convey in a land trust, do you convey the ownership to your trust, yet you still control the property? Well, it's you not really any different decisions. than, it's, it, is it any different than, I mean, it's technically a, a different, it's a different instrument or a different uh, mechanism than an LLC, but is it, for practicality purposes, is it, is it any different than than a corporation or LLC. You have yes, the main difference between an LLC and a land trust is, like I was mentioned before we were on air, is a LLC, if you have a note, like say in your name, 
If we have, well, wait, let me finish, please. But I wasn't. That you didn't get my. You didn't get well, my. What is it? What is I'm it? talking about for the purposes of, of Johnny's. I mean, excuse me, Donnie's description, where we're talking about ownership. It's still. It's still that that thing owns a, a piece of property. If you transfer ownership to a trust, then different people can have an interest in the trust. It's not. It's it's not really a separation between rights and ownership because the the owners the full rights and full ownership go to the trust when you transfer it and then whoever has rights to the trust is who has has ownership responsibility exactly i'm and looking it could, here it could be a corporation it could be an LLC. Well, it may not be true i'm i'm not stating for fact i'm 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 looking here at another <coughs> definition it says the purpose of a land trust is to allow one to have the legal tr title to his property held by another person or trustee while retaining all the rights and privileges of property ownership. Now, that's contrary to what I just said, and I don't understand that. How's it, what do you mean, con how's that contrary to what you just said? Read it again, Donnie. The purpose of a land trust is to allow one to have the legal title to his property held by another person. Right. So I could have le Go ahead. Which is the trustee, while retaining all the rights and privileges of property ownership, which is the beneficial interest. How's that contrary to what you were saying? The trustee acts only upon the beneficiary's direction. The property owner still retains all rights, such as the right to possession, to collect rent, mortgage, homestead exemption, and any other benefit he now has. It's different than a, in a LLC, where an LLC would absorb all that in its, in its entity. Whereas if you had a land trust, you would absorb whatever entity actually owns the property. Like if our entity as a group in the L Pinnacle Ventures LLC, it would retain all the rights of the, the deductions and collecting the rent and all that kind of stuff. And the people that had an interest in it, if we added uh, Bob or John or um, whoever, they would not have those, those rights to co collect rent. Just because I add you to my land trust, on uh, in Cerrito does not mean you have the right to go down and collect my rent. Is that what, the, what, what that does saying? the trustee? What what does the trustee? Unless you give them that right, have the right to do, or what what does the trustee gain from this? Is the trustee the actual trust, or a legal representative which manages the trust? It is the person. I guess, person that has legal title to the property. The person... It doesn't have... They don't own the property, but they have legal title. What's the, the difference property. between legal title and, and not and owning? It says the trustee acts only on the beneficiary's direction. And that beneficiary could be... It sounds to me like a foundation where you, you run a foundation and you manage it. The trustee would be the manager. Yeah. The trustee. <coughs> and it could be the same way with an LLC. An LLC would ha could have a manager that's not a um, member. Okay. Um, yeah. So. I, I, I need to. It passes title without the without like if there's a loan on it passes title without the do and sell clause for one. That's a one. That's an important thing. It also hides from the public record the sales price, the um, the all, any information down at the courthouse. Anything that you own, whether it's in an LLC's name, whether it's in your personal name, it would be taken off. It'd be taken so off. So a trust record. won't. A trusted. Does not have to record the sales price? No, it does not. And also, say if you, there isn't a sale that takes place. Is what I would okay. understand. Okay, that's that transfer does, may not record the price. But I'm assuming what we're saying is 
an individual or an LLC or some entity would have to purchase and then transfer ownership into the trust. And there would be a record of the sale. I'm not certain on that. I don't know if they, would, they take that off or not. I'm not sure if it's removed or not because what would be, what would be the point unless the actual land trust actually purchased the, pro the, pro the property then there would almost be a record of it. I guess they're all, I can't imagine that there's not. And usually a land for trust... For taxation purposes there has to be a record of the... Well yes there's a record but not a public record. The land trust there's a there's a record of it somewhere, but it's not a public record. It doesn't trigger a tax event to transfer property within a trust. I would say because of the Saint Germain Act, I'm not sure if it included Maybe the tax. If you sell a piece of property where there's a change of hands of money, that would be a tax of tax event, something that would be recorded and, and duly recorded at the courthouse. How much was how much money was changed hands? But say if I want to. If you want to, uh, if you have a piece of property that you want to, um, say you want you you want to um, go into business with somebody else, and what you want to bring to the table is this piece of property that you have, and you want to. Uh, you, you have somebody else that wants to go into business with you and you want to give them you want to um, give them part of this property or, or you want to have the business part of the assets you're bringing to the business as a whole is this property mm -hmm. so what you would do rather than say okay well the property's worth a hundred thousand um, dollars let's go down to the courthouse you bring fifty thousand dollars let's go down to the courthouse we'll put your name on the deed along with my name on the deed you give me fifty thousand dollars and we pay the tax on fifty thousand dollars and then your name is recorded on the deed and then we're both we're both definitely we're, we're both sale. in there that's a sale now another way what I envisioned another way to get to, to bring that in and to and to be able to um, leverage that asset between the two of you or, or whatever with another member is if you put it in a trust you could transfer and then you and then you bring that new member into the trust and he has equal membership in the trust that's not a sale. <coughs> okay, well, let me he, ask you his this. name is on it as well, or that other person. What are the implications, for example, of creating a trust? Let's say the four of us make a, a trust, and, and we transfer 100% of our holdings into it. And then we each have a 25% stake in the trust. I, I don't know that it works that exactly that way. Probably not the same terminology. It's not. You can I think it's... It's um, whatever the whatever the trustee says it is. So if that that the the person like you would have a lot of power in that in the, that kind of situation, where an LLC, it's you can have shares you have a, in the you trust. Have, in an LLC, more. you have kind of like in the, in the land trust is kind of like an absolute power. Like you can say whatever. You can say you only have whatever whatever you say they get is what they get. They do have something. They do have a say, and they can. You can hold up in court forever, saying, "Well, I want this, I want that," but you have more absolute power. Where in LLC, it's in the in the articles of the corporation you have. It's set in on, in writing that you have twenty five percent, I have twenty five percent, you have twenty five, or whatever. So that in, in a in a land trust, it's a little it's a little more fuzzy. And the person who's a trustee or the person who's created it has more absolute power, has more authority. In, in okay, that. what There's about things on the it, it, it goes along with the proportions of what each person transfers into the trust. Is that what you're Doesn't saying? Doesn't sound like it. <sighs> not really. It's pretty much whatever you write up. I mean, it, it's not. It's pretty well, it much. But it sounds to me like it doesn't. That doesn't matter. You, you're basically saying that the trustee can change the beneficiary amount. They can. They can. They can. It's, they, from what I understand, the, the trustee can. It's pretty much. It's an absolute power. Where in LLC, it's not. Like if Bob was head of the land trust, he could say whatever our shit. We he he can say whatever he can give us. Whatever. There's got to be some kind of protection because what about that's the bank? That's an LLC gives you the protection. What about what about know. the bank? I don't know. That's something that that's I, I really 
don't know that level of detail. But I know that in because a, the in bank has to have land protection. In a land trust situation, it, you have more absolute powers than you do in an LLC. Now there are like if an, if you make an LLC such as PV or something, you know, beneficiary, then it throws a little bit more. It throws more complexity in there. But the banks don't like that. The banks don't like it, but it's because of the St. Germain Act, that, or whatever the act is of 1982, that they have to do it. I'm not saying they like it, but they have to do it. But there's got to be, there's got to be protection for the bank, and, um, and they have to have, I mean... The, well, yeah, they're a lien holder. They're a lien holder. And if one of the trustees would, or if one of the beneficiaries would get sued, or you know they're not that this automatically means they're going to come after that that portion of the ownership. It's not as cut. It's just another. It's it's more red tape, and that's the whole. We're talking about asset protection today, and that's what you want to do. You want to tie things up in so much red tape that it would be it would take an, an attorney a lot of time and a lot of money to untangle it. And that's what you're doing. You're 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 making a lot of red tape, a lot of hassle for someone to come after you if you have. You know, like you read from the Wikipedia article, if you have a lot of real estate holdings, if you have you know business interests, you have a lot of you have a lot of assets that someone could come after. You want to create as much red tape as you possibly can in order for them, so they just can't you know come and get it. And a land trust, in conjunction with an LLC, will provide that red tape. I mean, it's not perfect. Nothing is perfect, but it does provide the red tape that's necessary to. To protect your assets. What are you guys looking up? I was looking at Bigger Pockets. They have an article on land trust and the asset protection. Um, their 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 um, take on a land trust. It says, in a nutshell, a land trust is a grantor trust. A grantor, grantor trust is a contract between three parties. The grantor, which is the creator of the trust, the trustee, who holds legal title to the property through the trust and typically, typically controls the trust assets, and the beneficiary, who holds the use and enjoyment of the assets within the trust. The most common form of grantor trusts in our country is revocable living trusts. The great thing about grantor trusts is that separate tax filings are not required since the profits, depreciation, and expenses associated with the asset will report on your personal 1040 return. Often investors are told they cannot form a land trust in a given state because there are no land trust statutes in that state. This information is not wholly correct. Even though only a handful of states have formal land trust statutes, every state has statutes regarding grantor trusts and thus the land trust would be recognized as a viable entity in that state since it is a grantor. Helpful that didn't help me yet. Uh, to be honest, that didn't help so me. So, what's at all. what's your prime? What, do you what's your primary? You feel like you have a, a some, some. It sounds it sounds it sounds really good. I just I don't want to just drink the Kool Aid. Uh, I want to know what's in it. I mean, it's not. It's a legal entity. It's not not some crazy notion that somebody just thought up. I mean, well, I, I understand that. Yeah. But it's just uh, you guys. Act, you you just act like you're just so surprised the whole concept. And we no, I'm about I'm not surprised about the whole concept. It's just a. Um, for I, example, I, I mean, but some of the things that you said are different than my understanding. Um, for example, you mentioned that the trustee has the right to to choose the amount of the beneficiary, and I just that just seems. That doesn't sound. What? That doesn't. 
I'm not sure about those all those aspects of it. Well, that's they, a gigantic. It is. That's, a, that's, a, know, that's a fundamental. I don't know how they divvy that out. I don't know. I know that the I know that the trustee and the grantor has more power than the, than than someone in an LLC would have. Well, here's they here's my concern. Power. I do know that. Well, here's where I come in and not I say this. This is, and maybe <coughs> this is unfounded, but I I'm thinking about adding or um, I'm thinking about adding people to the. Um, to a trust, let's say you built a trust, uh, and then you and I transferred our holdings into a trust, and then we wanted to add John and Donnie to the trust. Um, maybe they they purchase into the trust. You know, they they want to they want to pay a, an amount to to co-own something, and then they're going to have to be protected. They're, they're protected, we're protected just by the virtue that they're recorded. I mean, on, on the, in the trust because they own the trust, and we couldn't sell the property until we couldn't do anything with the property until they were dealt with. So they could hold it up and and you know they could hold it up legally forever. Well, that until sounds they were, like until, a very big. I mean, you just problem. don't go put anybody on that. You have to put someone that you trust or someone that you have that's giving you money or someone. And you just don't go do, putting people on there. Of course, you don't. Because they could, they actually hold legal title to the property. If we, if well, we no, the, the yes. trustee is the one that owns the legal title to the property. If we put their names on on a land as trust, a beneficiary, as a beneficiary, they can tie it up in legal, in, in the legal system for a long time. That you just can't, you just can't dissolve it, and the beneficiaries. You, I don't think you can just, you, they just doesn't disappear. You have to deal with them some way. Either by buying them out or, or whatever, or you can make them. I don't know how many trustees you can have. It depends on if you're a trustee or a beneficiary. That's something that we'd have to look more into. I don't know the answers to those questions. I do know that a land trust is a very uh, um, good tool for asset protection and to you know, like if John and Donnie wanted something from us, or they you know, this is a good it's a good business tool to use, and, and you can use several different ways. But it's different than an LLC. It's a different. It's a lot different than an LLC. This, especially as far as the banks are concerned. This is yeah. Uh, here's a little thing. I, I need to cite that I, I'm looking at. Uh, I'm looking at a, a website called Bigger Pockets. It's a blog, I guess. Bigger Pockets blog that um, kind of gives me a flavor of what uh, how an L, how LLC and land trusts. Oh, yeah. Oh, good. Um, okay. Okay. This guy he says, in my practice, the land trust is used as a title holding vehicle to minimize the risk of acceleration. This is the do on clock. Mm -hmm. The risk of acceleration when real estate is transferred into an LLC for asset protection, and there is no change in beneficial ownership. As many of you know, U.S. Code Twelve. U.S. Code Title 12, Chapter 13, Section 1701J-3 limits a, lender, <laughs> <laughs> limits a lender from accelerating a note when there is a transfer to an inter vivos trust in which the borrower is and remains a beneficiary. A real estate investor who desires the asset protection benefits of the LLC is often faced with this dilemma. Transfer the property into the LLC and the risk and risk the lender accelerating the note mm -hmm. or keep the property in its own name and risk being liable. Mm -hmm. Hence the land trust provides the remedy. Right. To solve the dilemma, an investor can establish a land trust to hold legal title to the property, wherein the investor is the trust beneficiary with rights of assignment. That rights of assignment sound like what you're talking about. After title is recorded in the name of the trust, the investor slash beneficiary quietly assigns his beneficial interest to his LLC. The transfer goes unnoticed by the lender because it is not recorded. 
Once the interest is held by the LLC, the LLC, as the trust beneficiary, becomes liable for the trust's debts and obligations. Similarly, the charging order protections will shield the land trust interest, i.e. personal property from the individual's personal creditors. So you get the charging order protection from the LLC. Right. And you get the transfer, you get the transfer benefits uh, the from the trust. Yeah. But there have been, I've noticed, I mean, they do contact you. I don't know if you have to, but they are, according to that, they're not contacting the bank. But I've seen where you contact the bank where, they, where you tell them that it's being transferred into so a trust. Been, uh, I guess that that way. You're, you're really here's to, here's the part that I this is my big question that I don't understand. I mean, I can make a bunch of assumptions, but here's the part that I don't understand. Let's uh, we've we've got this asset that we that we transfer to a trust, and then we go to the then we go to the bank, and we and I I think when you say okay, what are your assets? What's your income? That kind of thing. I think what you would have to say is you can't say I own this building. I think you would have to say I'm the beneficiary of this. I'm a X percentage or no, X you, amount. You're the grantor and the trustee. You do own the building. You do own the building. You own the, the land trust. You do own. If it. you're the trustee, but if you're not the trustee, like if it was. Well, if, let's if I'm assuming there can only be one trustee. I'm, I'm assuming too. I'm, I'm assuming sure. that. Yeah. I don't know that. We've got a lot of questions that we need to ask. We need to write these down. Um, go ahead. That sounds good. Um, I'm trying. So, if I'm the if I'm the trustee, I own it. I have title. Is that that's what we're reading? Is that correct? I, I, I um, that may not be the right. There may be a difference between holding title and ownership. That's right. That's right. I don't. That's I don't really understand the difference. In. That's where the trust comes in. Is that you don't own it. You hold the trust it. owns it. Well, the grantor owns it. The is this a revocable trust? I don't know. I can understand that. I, that that's a, something I can understand. If I'm mentally unfit, and, or I'm worried that I'm going to be fit, mentally or physically unfit to be able to do business, I can I can revocably grant someone permission to do business on my behalf and he can sign the same as I can he he can make all the legal decisions and judgments but then I have the ability to revoke that trust and then it, that trust no longer that trust no longer exists therefore I've technically always been the holder of the property even though he could control it that would be like a title holder I would that's the difference between an owner and a title holder I'm assuming and I don't yeah, I think you can you probably can make it just like anything else a revocable or irrevocable, I'm sure. I mean I don't know. Couldn't you? Well, I, be able to well I I would think that it's either one or the other legally. Yeah. And based on the fact that you're transferring title I don't, that's I don't know. One of the differences between a land trust and a LLC. If in an LLC it's irrevocable, you just can't revoke my right. You can't just kick me out and say you're done with in a land trust maybe you can I don't know there's got to be more protection in that there has to that, be there, there has to be nobody would ever use no, it ever it would be you would never do it except a single owner and that, that's not there's got to be some protection there well I guess if you made um, there's a difference between the trustee and the beneficiary which in turn I guess you would have to decide whether there could be more than one trustee if a trustee I don't think you can do that with the beneficiary. Maybe you can. Well, that's. But I'm saying know. there's got to be a, and and can a trustee uh, on most foundations? Or, well, let's look at the trustee of a church. Mm -hmm. The trustees of a church can be changed at any time. Right. But is that, a, is that usually a legal structure? Is that you're talking about legal? No, absolutely, it's legal. I know they have legal, legal structures in churches, but no, I'm, it's it's a legal. I'm not sure if you use it using trustees as a, like a deacon or trustee in no. the legal sense. Trustee in the legal making sense. Sure. No, we're talking about law here, so that's the reason I'm talking about. I'm talking about legal. Um, so because a, a person could, 
and there's all kinds of reasons that that has to be the case. People die. If a trustee were to die, there has to be a provision. So what are some of the questions that we want to ask? Like when we have an expert that we can ask. What are some of the questions that we're not sure about? How are the beneficiaries protected? Does the, What rights does the Hold trustee on. have? I mean, what does the trustee do? They have to have some... When you have responsibilities, you have to have rights. Can there be more than one trustee, which I don't think there can be. But I, I don't know. There could be a board. What are the complications that could arise in in dissolution? You know, if you pretty much we in our LLC we made specific guidelines. Should one or more of a mutual consent, should somebody want to dissolve the LLC, there's a there is a. Um, I think that's where the beneficiary comes in. There's no dissolving. Included, it's like you know, it's like being a beneficiary of a of a of a um, of a life insurance policy. You're just either you're on it or you're not. You get you get it or you don't. And the only way you get it is if something happens to the grantor or the trustee, or if it's you know, then you're the beneficiary of that. Then it does that. I think that the main power is in the grantor and the trustee, not the beneficiary. Is what I'm thinking. Well, I think that has to do with whether it's. Uh, as far as the grantor, <laughs> I would think in order to lose the liability, Incoming transmission. I would think you would have to lose the ability to revoke it. So can a trust, can a land trust be irrevocable? Or are they by their very nature? I mean, it would it would make sense to me that it may be by its nature. Ah, we're talking today about land trust and LLCs and how they uh, differ as far as asset protection go. Um, yeah, we've been kind of exploring. We're, uh, we're, we're, we're certainly not experts on these things, but we're, we're kind of exploring what what it uh, exploring this tool of a of, of a land trust and and what. Um, why people uh, why people use these uh, land trusts? I think we've identified that there's a, a, a value to having a land trust when it comes to transferring transferring um, properties, but we are, don't have a good understanding of what the rights and responsibilities of the trustee and the grantor are right. in a in a land trust. Um, but um, I guess we we can. Uh, what I what I do have is a good understanding that it, it um, that property can be transferred um, um, with a land trust and it not be recorded as a sale, which is valuable when it comes to um, mortgages uh, uh, with due on sale clauses and with um, tax uh, um, avoiding a. a, a a taxable event, a, a, a sale, a property sale that's recorded at the courthouse. Those are, and that's two. another question about the um, that I have that you may mention while I was stepped out for a moment. Um, do you have? You mentioned a protection from knowing. I think what we're saying is the transfer from an individual or a corporation to a trust is not a recordable event for quantitative per for, for it's dollar not a, purchases. It's not a money. It, it, it's, it, it's, it's not a it's not a sale. It does, it's not a sale. Money doesn't change hands okay. and therefore so it's I'm not assuming a that I, I'm assuming that if, if you were going to use a trust in this manner and you were going to acquire more property <coughs> I'm assuming that if the trust purchases something if the trust, and I'm assuming that it has the ability, if the trust purchases property, I'm not sure that. Go ahead. Does the trust purchase? I'm not sure if it does. I think the, the entity, the person or the 
LLC or the corporation such as PV or whatever other corporation we have would actually purchase it or one of our individual names would purchase it and then move it into the okay. land trust. If that yeah, makes sense to me. I don't think it actually purchases property. A trust isn't like a person. It's not a, a trust is not an entity is what I'm, I'm, I'm thinking. I mean, I'm not trust tr is, true on that. An LLC is an entity. An LLC a corporation acts the same as a person. A trust is not an entity. So I, being well, it's an not an entity. Can, an LLC can play a role in a trust right. relationship. Okay, and right. I, that makes but sense. Being that it's that not makes an total entity, sense to me. Purchase but property or do I would think place. that the amount of the tra the purchase would be in the um, the amount of the purchase would be in the um, would be in the what. Would still be recordable by by who whichever entity purchases makes a purchase, and then it would be transferred to the trust. Right. So I don't know. I don't know why I don't, that is. I, don't know I think they, it would I don't not be. A, I don't know if they remove it. I think it's I just. Think I think it's just a matter. Of, I think the just the transfer is what's not recorded. The purchase has to be recorded. I would be very surprised if that's not the case. The purchase must be recorded. The transfer, because it's not a it's not a taxable event. That that part would not be so that you would not know care. you would not know that that this trust in effect it, it, you would not know that you paid fifty thousand dollars whoever purchased it there would be that record of fifty thousand dollars and then the transfer to the ownership that would not have that would not have uh, a record but I I can't. I know that they don't remove records. I just want to make sure you don't. You want to make sure you purchase an analysis. Like you don't want someone going to a courthouse and saying, "Well, Donnie Somerville purchased uh, 200 properties the past couple of years." If he has, a, if he's done it under a few LLCs or a few corporations and then transferred it into a land trust, it would be very difficult for that to find, for someone to find that out. But uh, yeah, it's not recorded into a land trust. I guess there's no there's no record of it. And if someone asks you, you have to you can't tell them unless they have a court order. I mean, you don't have to. You don't have to. You don't. It's it's, it's a privacy issue, just as much as it is anything else. But I don't. I don't know if. I mean, still, I guess you could still get to. The, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if they strike it. I mean, if this is. There's no, I can. I can almost 100% guarantee. There's no removing of the sale record with the taxation amount. That's not what would be. That's not what would be. Re and they don't remove those owner. records. You're still the owner. Well, you ju you still Even purchased it. You purchased whoever uh, purchases a piece of property. There's going to be a record of that transaction taking place. Mm -hmm. There may not be a record of transferring it to transferring the ownership. I don't know how that would work. There there probably is a record of the transfer of ownership. There's just not an amount associated with it. And that's what I I can see that. As a possibility. Most importantly, though, <coughs> most importantly, besides that, I mean, they could, they can know, they can know whatever they want to know. They're gonna, they could find out one way or the other. But most importantly, it's a tool. Any judgments or liens against the entity, whether it's against your LLC or against you, are not against the, the land trust. So if you have 500 properties in your land trust, one of them gets sued, or you get sued personally. They can't go after the land trust. It That's sounds like it is, unless you put it. The protection of the charge or the charge order protection comes from the LLC that has the vested interest in the uh, trust. Is that what it said? I think so. I think the charge order. So you have to have an LLC, LLC as a bene as a beneficiary. Well, so a beneficiary that, does I, all I'm doing. I, I don't have it. All my experience so is yeah. what he read just a minute yeah. ago. I mean, I'm just not I sure. I'm not sure. The LLC is what gives you the limited liability. I'm not sure about that. The it sounds like it's, it's more for. Uh, I'm not sure that an LLC. Then what would be even what even what would even be the point of why just not put it? I can see the obfuscation. I'm not, that's I'm, what it sounds like. The purpose of this is it's then and and the ability to uh, one thing you get is the ability to go from a single owner to multiple owners. Yeah, what I can do is I have a property worth a hundred thousand dollars. And I want, I want you. I want to go in business with you, and you. Or got, leave it to an heir. Yeah, and you've got fifty thousand dollars, and rather than me 
right selling. on me selling you half of it and you giving me fifty thousand um, dollars and we record that you own half and I own half we can um, you can you can have it we can put together an LLC right. you can put the fifty thousand cash in the LLC that's your contribution to the LLC I can put together a trust with the LLC as a beneficiary right. of that trust or, or a trustee. 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 The LLC could be a trustee in a trust with the property that I own. This, And I could be a trustee. I need to be a trustee too because of this Garn San Germain uh -huh. Act. I need to be a trustee in the, the trust too. That won't work. Or it won't work. And then the LLC. But it sounded to me like the, member, the LLC was the beneficiary, not the trustee. I don't, don't see why. Anybody, it could be any. Well, LLC is an entity, it's a person, so it can be a trustee. It can be. The, I'm not saying that it can I'm be. I'm the grantor. Well, I guess there's the. It could even be the grantor, even. I think there are these three. There are these three parts, but they're not. We don't fully understand. I, we don't fully understand, but. But the LLC, where I was going with this is the, okay, so I have the, you have $50,000, I have a $100,000 property. We want to go into business together. We both, so you could give me $50,000 and I could put your name on the property. And then we would both be, we would both have fifty thousand dollars worth of property um, but there's a tax event there and, and the and possibility that there's a mortgage on it and they wouldn't allow it they wouldn't allow it clause. that and and both our names are on the property if somebody uh, if somebody wants to sue us they could go down there and find out who we were and what we owned um, those are things that we don't want to have happen so what we do is we go and we put together an LLC and I'm a member of the LLC, and you're a member of the LLC. And what you're going to bring to the LLC is $50,000 cash. So you bring that in, that's your contribution to the LLC. My contribution to the LLC is this property. But I don't want to just sell the property to the LLC. That's a tax event. So what I do is I make a trust where I'm the grantor of the trust. I, I still own the property. But I am granting the title of the property and the ability to go and get <coughs> liens on the property, legal title to the property. If you have legal title to a property, you can go to a bank and say, I, here's my title to exactly. this property. I can get a lien. I can, this is, this is it. Exactly. No, so no, I grant, don't. so I grant you title. I grant title to the LLC, but I still own the property, and the uh, I am still owner. <coughs> so there is no sale. Actually, grant title to the land trust, right? That the LLC is the the trustee on, right? I'm title to the land. I grant granting title. title. Well, you don't we're, we're, we're forming a land trust, right? And I am granting the land trust. The is, title is land be. trust. The, the trustee land, of the land trust is the LLC, is what he said. Right, the but trustee, the LLC won't hold title, the land trust will hold title, won't it? Well, the land trust... The trustee I think is the, the person that holds title. The land trust okay. is what this relationship is called. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like a marriage, right. where I'm, you know, it's I'm in the marriage, entity. and he's in the marriage. But what this... But, you know, there's a bride and there's a groom, and what our relationship is called is a marriage, but the marriage doesn't own... Right, right. It's sort of like so. There's the, so we put we make a land trust, mm -hmm. which is the marriage. But the the LLC, I give the LLC. I put he puts fifty thousand dollars. That's his contribution to the LLC. My contribution is the I grant title. I don't put the property on there. I own the property, but I grant title to the LLC, and that is the birth of a land trust. 
Okay, the, in, the, in that the case, LLC. there has to be it has to be irrevocable. Yeah, it has to be irrevocable. Uh, that's not necessary. That's I don't. I don't know. That. It, that's it, not it, true. See, There's people. If it's right, right, they you could just back. revoke it immediately. They could say, "Well, well, you did that, but I, I mean, it seems to me like you to to have the liability protection, you would want it to be irrevocable." So, like, somebody couldn't come back and say, you well, this. snatch that right back out of here. Yeah. I, you know I think, but, you, know. you might have to, you might have to, you know, uh, say that from the beginning. But here's a, a post on Crew Online. That they're basically, they're talking about um, banks and the, um, the do on sell clause and that kind of thing to give you the gist of it. But it's, he's saying, a trust can assume liability for a loan that is assumable. You can transfer property into a trust for your own benefit, even if there is a non-assumable loan for the Garn St. Germain Act. However, the original borrower is still liable for the promissory note. The land trust, as a revocable, revocable living trust, does not need a federal ID number since the mortgage interest is still deductible to the grantor beneficiary. So the beneficiary might help hold more uh, clout than we think, as per the grantor provisions of the IRC section 671-678. So he's saying that this is revocable. That can be revocable. So maybe you you have to say that from the very beginning. You have to let that be known from the very beginning. Like and you do a bank account. Either it's revocable or irrevocable. I don't know. I just don't know. I, I'd like you to reread that so I can get a second pass at it. Let me read the whole thing first. Because this is a person that was basically trying to... Um, he's telling the bank that uh, he's putting his property into a land trust. And again, this is on Crew Online. This is not any of what we got. Um, this is the question. Uh, Mr. Bronchick, and he's an attorney, I think. You say that the trust can assume responsibility for the loans. So far, it's been my experience that this is false. Example. Before I knew about a land trust, I bought a house which is financed through Norwest. We signed our names on social security numbers at closing three years ago. Just recently, I learned about trust and placed my property into a land trust. I contacted Norwest, Nor Norwest and told them that this was done per the Garn St. Germain Depository Institutions Act and said that I would like the trust placed on the loan and have the interest reported under the trust EIN. So that's letting me, that's making me think that the trust is an entity, which would be contrary to what you guys are saying. No, I mean, I'm not, you're the one that said that it was not an I mean, entity. I, that's I, what I, I think, think I, I think it, it, I, that's what that's, I'm saying. That's I think that's it's against not. against what I was thinking. I'm thinking it's not, but what you read, These I don't know. These are two people arguing about this. This is the two people arguing. I don't know. I mean, I don't think it is. I'm like you, think it's a marriage, but it's contrary to what we're saying, I should say. Yeah. Not so now, he, now he's saying his trust has an EIN. This Which is, I wouldn't think that a trust would have any. Right. I, mean, well, I would think is, an LLC. This is well. He's not. It, he's not. Yeah, I don't. Okay. I think this is what the problem is. It's yeah. not. He's trying to do this, and it's not. He's incorrect. He, he has. He has made a trust be an something entity, that it's not. Something that's not. So something this is what we're doing. Okay. So come on. Next, let's get, we're going to diagnose people used based on Google. <laughs> We're going, to, we're going to do medical... Uh, no, we're just trying to dissect... <laughs> we're trying to dissect what other people I have done. Yeah. What other people are trying to do this. and dissect it and understand yeah. it. So I think is, that this guy... This is what I think is the, is the, the writer of this letter. Uh -huh. And getting an EIN... He thought he was getting an EIN for a land trust, but he's getting an EIN for something else. Right. So this EIN. guy is going to say this land trust... That land trusts don't have the EINs. Right, Go right, ahead. right. That's my prediction. That's and he's going to a bank. You know, he's letting them know that this is kind of like you would with an LLC or something. So, keeping in mind that we believe that and uh, that a land trust is not an entity, right? Okay. Yeah. So I contacted Norwest and we just over again. I contacted Norwest and I told them that this was done per the Garn St. Germain Depository Institutions Act and that I'd like the trust placed on the loan and have the interest reported under the trust EIN. They refused. Wait, it gets better. I didn't make a big stink about it because I was going to re refinance to lock in at a lower rate. So I figured I'd try my luck on a different institution, BB&T. Everything was going smoothly. I sent the lender a copy of the trust agreement as they requested. They reviewed it said no problem, 
the trust is fine, and the EIN will be on the note, etc., etc. That's strange, okay. Then right at the closing table, bam, the phone rings, and it's BB&T. Someone decided it was not, it was now not all right. Here, Bob. Yeah. Are you listening? Uh -huh. Someone decided it was not now not all right, and if I wanted to close, I'd need to quit claim it out of the trust, close, and quit claim it back into the trust. Now I'm back to square one because I don't want to file interest under the trust EIN. I can't win. What's going on? Who's right? Mr. John Quick or the mortgage comp Mr. Bronchick or the mortgage companies? Or am I missing something important? And the mortgage companies see my ignorance important. and are taking advantage. I haven't been able to shed light on it. Can you all help? I don't think they're taking advantage. I think he missed the boat. And this is what I think that he's getting confused what an LLC and a trust is. Uh, yeah, I'm a, this is interesting to see what he says. I think you misconstrued what I said. A trust can assume liability for a loan that is assumable, pre-1989 FHA loan. You can transfer property into a trust for your own benefit, even if there is a non-assumable loan per the Garn St. Germain Act. However, the original borrower is still liable for the promissory notes. So whether it's an LLC or a person. The land trust, as a revocable living trust, does not need a federal ID number, which we agree on, since the mortgage interest is still deductible to the grantor beneficiary as per the grantor provisions of IRC section 601-678. Again, whether it's an LLC or, or a person. Um, most conventional lenders require that the property be in your name for funding for a purchase, money, loan, or refinance. Thus, it is not surprising that BB&T insisted that, your quit claim, that you quit claim it out of the trust for the refinance. There's nothing legally wrong with having it in a trust for a refi, but most lenders are just are just plain ignorant. Well, and that's what that's my that's that makes sense. That goes along with what I'm reading here. Um, the non-conventional lenders I deal with let me buy and refi in a trust, having the trustee sign the note and mortgage on behalf of the trust and me co-sign the promissory note. A non-conventional lender, like if we wanted to borrow money from you, or if you wanted to have an interest in it, and we put you on the on the note, or we, we do a land, kind of like what we were talking about before. Um, after the refi, you can simply quit claim it back to the trust, and that's a whole other section about quit claim. I want to talk about quit claims at some point. Quit claims and how it relates to land trust, and how it relates to the, the whole asset protection, and how you can use it as a tool. But that's a whole, we've already been on an hour, so that's a whole other selection but um, in the future I recommend just transferring the property to the trust and say nothing if the lender contacts you most don't then give them a copy of the trust okay so what concerns me there is what one of my early questions were about what this is said it sounds to me like this this grant grantor trusts are not they're not designed for multiple Non familial, or they're not designed for business, is what it sounds like. I may be totally I wrong. I disagree because I just got he just got through saying that he was he when they borrow money against it. I mean, that, uh, well, what I'm what this is what one of the things that's talking about an EIN, whether you need one or not, is that you don't need a tr you don't need an employee EIN if it's a grant or trust. A technical term that basically means a trust is either revocable or provides benefits for the person who established the trust. <coughs> um, banks will not open accounts in the name of a trust without a, a tax number. Um, and that sounds exa like exactly what we're saying. The bank's not going to do business with you. Without an without an EIN, and an EIN is not appropriate for this kind of it's this kind of this kind of. It sounds to me like it's after you've developed your a trust uh -oh. doesn't hold an asset. A trust ex describes how an asset is related. Like how how oh, how related. how like a marriage how, how, the how, beneficiary yeah. is and yeah. And I can believe how, that that yeah. makes that makes perfect sense. So. My concern is that when you put it into the trust, perhaps you are, perhaps, I'm not saying this is yeah. true, what 
is without transferring it back out of the trust, without quick claiming it, can you use it to borrow to borrow additional monies on that? Are there are there is there limitations on yeah how because you do with it because oh, I'm going to write that question down. Meaning, can you can you can you HELOC with it? Can you once it's in there? Because the banks are not going. It sounds to me like here's two different sources saying that banks don't like don't do business like that mm -hmm. with these grant with the grant or trust. They won't do that. They won't do business with that as the unless you do what he said and quit claim it in and out. Like uh, we just do. We, if it's in the land trust and we want to refinance it, we quit claim it out of it. What are the then, and then what get are the, the implications of that? It and then go back to the the bank and say, "Hey, I want to do this." I don't know. That, that sounds, sounds like it's that sounds like a lot of uh, manipulation. Well, that's that's the name of the game. I mean, that's and it may it may be perfectly fine. But the bank still normal. has their lien on it. They don't lose their position on the mortgage. That not, has nothing to do with that. They're not going to you, know, you bankrupt it. And they're still going to get their money. I mean, if you, if you, you know, they're but still going to come like they like doing that. They're still going to come after you. They don't like doing it, but it's the, the act. So, so we need to we need to find that information out before we can uh, determine. But you don't tell them is what I'm saying. You don't go there and say like this guy did. You don't go and say, Oh, I I'm going to I'm going to do this. I want my EIN number and blah 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 blah. You don't do it if it's already in a land trust. You quit claim it out. So then the bank sees that you have the LLC, or the, if you're if you're borrowing money in your personal name or the LLC, they see that you hold title to it. And then once the transaction is complete, then you go back and well, and I will say some banks won't again. do loans unless you've held title something a certain amount of time. But it's we not recorded. With it's not a land yeah, trust. Yeah, a quick claim is a, a deed. quick claim is recorded. Yes. So yeah. So, so if recorded. you were going to, if you if you had it in a trust name. And you said, "Okay, I'm going to borrow money. I'm going to quick claim it back over to myself, right, right. They or to the LLC, or whatever entity is going to be responsible for that." There's a that's a that's a deed. A quick claim is a deed, and therefore I understand it's a that. Transfer. I understand and it's so, a deed. Uh, the, so, what are you saying? The bank I'm saying, allow for it? example, uh, they didn't. Want, they wanted us to own something for a minimum of six months before they would loan money on it. The particular instance that we had with with well, uh, that's this quick that. claim thing. When they did that quick claim, that was a taxable event right there. That, I, I don't understand. I would that, that, that just uh, defeats the, the that benefit. That defeats the whole reason for the trust thing. I, 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 that's what I thought. When, when I read that, and it, it's like they had him do the quick claim. It's like, well, the, the trust didn't do him any good. Well, and, and if, you, if you did it into an LLC, you still got that same issue, whether you transfer it to individuals. Any individual, multiple individuals, or a, a legal entity such it's as a LLC. He was doing it wrong. He had to, <coughs> well, he was doing it wrong. But it sounds like if you quit claim it to a land trust, though, there's not a tax event because the land trust right. isn't a person. Okay, and I, so I can be, understand it would be that. a tax event only to the other the, direction. The other direction. But what I'm saying, in order to borrow money, it would be. Is that? I'm, I'm not saying it is. I'm saying that's what it I mean, sounds if like. You're the, if the LLC is a sole, is the the, the the grantor, and then you're transferring it into a land trust, which is not an entity, it's basically a marriage between the the the, land, the grantor and whoever else they want to have on it, which would be the the trust. I don't know if the trustee and the grantor could be the same person. I don't know, but it wouldn't be a tax event because you're doing it you're you're doing it to yourself. It'd be like giving money to yourself. So would that be a tax event? Am I seeing that correctly? Like if I transfer money, if I'm doing it in a land trust, so if I'm if I'm LQA and I'm uh, submitting, I'm doing a quick claim deed to uh, for a into a land trust, which is not an entity, and then I quick claim deed out, quick claim it, quick quick claim it out. Is that a tax event because I'm giving it back to myself, giving it back to the entity which is LQA? I don't know. I would think it would be. I would think transferring title to a to an LLC, a person or persons, would be the same as me. I'm selling. saying an LLC that actually owns the note, has the note that's getting getting the mortgage, and then it's quick claiming it to the land trust, which with the with the with the LLC as the trustee and the grantor, and then transferring it back. 
that's the same entity. I could see if it was a person, if it was you, Robert Dawson, transferring uh, it to, into a, a, a land trust with LQA being the grantor, and then the grantor tra transferring it back to you. I could see how that could be a tax event. But if, all, if everything's the same, if it's the same entity that's doing the, the whole transaction, I don't see how it would be a tax event. I mean, I might be missing something. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know either, but I, I would think when you create a deed, when you create a deed, I, I can't imagine that it's not. It, with the exception, so if you're married, of, if you're married, if like if if you, um, I'm trying to think of a circumstance where it would be where it would be, it would be similar on like a personal. How I don't know. I mean, if you're giving money to yourself, you go borrow your own money. If you're giving money to that's yourself, not the same. If if you give money to yourself. That's not the taxable well, event. A grantor trust is a legal entity an individual creates to hold and control his assets. A grantor trust is different from a grantor of a trust. A grantor trust is the legal entity a person creates, whereas the grantor of a trust is the person who creates it. The person who creates a trust is always called the grantor, regardless of whether he creates a grantor trust or a different kind. In a grantor trust, the grantor creates a trust and transfers assets to it. This type of trust is typically revocable. As long as the grantor is alive, he can make changes to the terms of the trust or even revoke it altogether. Exactly, that's what I was saying. I think that that, that makes would a be sense. a trust. That would be like that would that trust would be the the mission of that trust would be maybe to. Main for maintenance purposes to for the <coughs> upon the grantor's death, however, the trust becomes irrevocable. This means that it must be administered according to the terms the grantor created while he was living. And that's why, based on what I'm reading here, it doesn't sound like it's the appropriate tool. For an individual, it to grant. It probably is for an LLC. An LLC could probably still do it and still because the LLC, if the LLC is the grantor, I'm, I'm, this is hypothetical, I don't even know if you can do this. I, I think you can, but if the if an LLC, if we take an LLC, our LLC and we transfer it to a trust and then for whatever reason the tr an individual like you like your scenario where you got you want to bring somebody in without involving them. The only reason I would think you'd want to do that is a is a spouse or life partner or something where you 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 give a hundred percent trust to them because when because the, otherwise it sounds to me like you can just you can take it away. You can you can take away that benefit. You as the homeowner that transfers the asset in could remove somebody as a beneficiary. And that's that goes along with what we've heard about people using trusts as methods of avoiding real, I mean, inheritance tax, is they can go in at any time and say, okay, I'm leaving, you're my two sons, I'll leave it equally to you. And then I get mad at you and I say, okay, you're written off and now you're the, you're the, you're the sole beneficiary. And that's, that sounds like the same kind of institution. So I, if an LLC transferred it, it sounds like it would be a good thing because there's not an individual. It's controlled by a group. It's controlled by the group, like and, that, can't and the, the responsibilities and the and the contract you have, the the articles the that you have, the articles, of the, the articles that you have that rule how you do things That's still per, still persist right. because yeah. it is irrevocable. It, I mean, I think I've pretty much established that. That was my problem. There's right. got to be a protection for somebody. The only reason somebody would do this is if they were protected. The only way a person could be protected in this instance is to be the grantor. I don't think in under any circ other circumstance, if you are not a grantor, because the whole purpose of this is for the benefit of the grantor. If you are not the grantor, you can't add people in. I don't, you can make them a beneficiary, but the problem is, is a beneficiary can be removed. It's like a life insurance you can or also anything do else. A quick claim. That person could has the option to do a quick claim too. I mean, if well, they, now you if, if, if you if you dissolve it, if you dissolve it or you quick claim it, 
you're transferring it back out of that scenario, and then you got to transfer it back in if you're trying to do that. What I'm saying is, there's it's not it's it's not made. It is it is sounds like it's very different from an LLC or a corporation in that regard. And the grantor has 100% of the power. And that's what it sounds like. So it's it 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 would only be appropriate if your LLC was the grantor, not individuals. Yeah, because of the individuals, like you said, whoever grant whoever is the grant. It, one person's not. That's what I was saying initially. One person's not calling the shots. One person can't say, "Okay, you're out, you're in, you're out, you're in, you're out, you're in." Well, that's what I was saying initially. It gives one person too much control or power. Where if the LLC was the grantor, like the three of us, the four of us, then one person doesn't have all the control or the power. So, like, yeah, I'm, I agree with you. <coughs> unless we're proved otherwise, it's important for the LLC if you're going to have that kind of arrangement, like as far as a business partner or whatever. It and this goes important. along exactly with what we've read about trusts before. While the grantor is living, he is usually responsible for the taxes on the trust's income. Typically, the beneficiaries receive the income, but do not have to pay any income taxes on it. And we've been told that before with other kinds of trusts, such as charitable remainder, as a way to, as a way to give your children an income without, without giving them liability. Now Donnie looks confused. <laughs> and it's all really challenging, isn't it? That well, it's I new. It's say, new ground. Yeah. We've got a we've got this a little bit of a basis that we've yeah. where we've we're, we're talking about this before. Here. It yeah. is, and it's learning, and yeah. we're not we, we're we, not going to be experts. We and touched, I just sign on the dotted line because we discuss it for an hour. We it's, touched on this like our last meeting in January. Not that it was two years ago. It'll be two years ago. God, it's hard to believe. It. It'll be two years ago where we did the. The whole weekend extravaganza on um, on uh, asset, asset protection. protection. Yes. That's been two years ago now, almost. Anyway, um, we touched on it then, and the different tools and all that kind of stuff. But we haven't, we didn't visit, we haven't visited it. I guess in at least two years. So it's been that long. So I just wanted to, um, I just wanted to talk about it today, and talk about how it could be, <coughs> how it could be a tool to be used for our advantage. If it could be. So you guys want to wrap it up? Okay. You, you have any? You have any other uh, questions or comments, Bob or Donnie? Well, I, I, I it's been a very beneficial hour for me um, to uh, to um, bring this out, um, bring this to light. Uh, about uh, land trusts uh, um, as a um, as a tool, um, um, getting a, a better appreciation of, of, of uh, creative uh, ways to um, um, to move assets about and and uh, uh, and uh, it's it, it, it's kind of we're gonna we're gonna I sense that at some point in the future we're going to use the land trust once we figure out what it's good for. Mm -hmm. Next week we're going to talk about LLCs and the importance of LLCs as far as asset protection, which we know what much more about um, as far as asset protection and um, how it relates to our business and why you should use an LLC to purchase property and businesses and so on and so forth and uh, all the ins and outs of that. So we'll talk about that next week or December 5th at 1 o'clock, right? You know, I'm going to be here. Um, John will be here next week. We, uh, if you're planning on that, oh, I can't wait. We, we, we're going to be out of town next week. We might have to do a recording or something. We'll have to, might have to be the week after that. Okay. Anyway, we'll talk about that. Join us here on LandlordsJournal.com for our weekly pod podcast was originally aired on November 28, 2010. Uh, be sure to join us on LandlordsJournal.com and check out our uh, schedule um, for a future podcast. And also be sure to check out our email list uh, where you will receive a free ebook um, all about real estate investing 
um, for signing up to our email list. Um, in addition, our forums are open. Um, you can discuss our podcast there. And we uh, be on the lookout for um, on our website for... Um, we plan on having uh, guest speakers and a call-in feature to our, to our uh, show. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, you'll be able to call in and ask questions or comment on whether you are a tenant, uh, real estate investor, or landlord. Um, so, as always, you can find us over on and we'll see you next time. Thank you.